Hey everyone, this is Prince Watercrest, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play. This time around, it is Akuji the Heartless for the PlayStation 1. Another 3D platformer in the vein of the two 3D Gex games. Unlike those two games, however, this one has slightly more mature material going on, I would say. There's mo there's slightly more mature themes and more blood and guts action than you would expect from the 3D Gex games. So as you can see, this is a 3D platformer. You're obviously doing a little bit of plat platforming and puzzling here and there. You're also doing a little bit of fighting. You get to cast spells on enemies whenever possible to further save yourself against them. This one is a little more darker than the Gex games, that's for sure. And of course, you're also collecting things. That should go without saying. And I'm not quite sure how long I should let the demo run. As I talk about this game. Um, this game, I remember seeing advertisements for it as a kid. It wasn't until I watched Noofy Bongo play it that I decided to go ahead and give this game a shot. So, here I am. Let's go ahead and instead of just starting a new game, I want to look up the controller settings real quick. Well, you have the ability to move. You can use the analog stick if you choose. I'm looking at the default options, by the way. There are at least three or four different controller configurations that you can choose from. X lets you jump. Circle lets you attack. Square lets you cast spells. And triangle lets you switch between the spells. L1 and R1 let you rotate the, rotate the camera left or right. I cannot speak again to save my life. I can never speak at any of these videos to save my life for some t reason. I don't know why. If you press L1 and R1 at the same time, you can zoom the camera in and out, which can be nice. I'm glad they allow you to do that. L2 lets you crouch and perform other moves, such as cr crawling, somersault jumps, and even a diving attack. And R2 is your look around button, which is basically your first person mode. I'm going to keep the controls as they are. Here are the options. Don't really have anything to adjust at the moment. Auto the ability to automatically center the camera is on by default. I don't know if I'll change it off. If I do, I will let you know. And of course, there's also DualShock functionality. You can also play around with the sound, the sound levels of both the sound effects, the music, and the voice. And you can switch between stereo and mono if you choose. And I've been talking for long enough. Let's start a new game. From my childhood, I've been told that only the strong survive. That the strong will rule. That power is the reward of a virtuous life. I led a virtuous life. I mastered the art of fighting. My weapons were an extension of my will. For spiritual power, I studied the ways of Buddha, the rituals of blood sacrifice, to channel the gods and unleash their wrath upon my enemies. I was to wed Keisha. Secured my family's control over the ruling class of Amora. The wedding rites were interrupted by my sudden murder. Though my life was taken by bitter treachery, my struggle did not end. Sometimes death.
And the story is now set. We were supposed to be married to a woman, and our marriage would unify two tribes, unite them. Unfortunately, we were murdered, and we're dead. Now we're in Cockatiss, the River of Souls. Your quest begins. Traverse the rivers to reach the Spirit Gate. Strike the hint tablets for control instructions. And from here, we might as well continue because what else is there to do? I mean, it's not like there must do, you can do if you press triangle. And here we are. As mentioned, we mentioned earlier, we can move around the control pad. X attacks. Square lets us cast spells. X lets us jump. You can move the camera around. You can zoom the camera in and out with L1 and R2 simultaneously. And by rotating the camera, we can find these voodoo dolls. The creature collect 100 voodoo dolls to increase your health meter. And we will need as many health extensions in this game as we can get. And we found a purple skull here. Discovered a voodoo spell. You'll find these scattered across the underworld. Each shade of spell has a unique and powerful effect. But beware, you will only be able to keep your spells in the world in which you found them. I could not have explained that any better. Press square to cast spells. In this case, Fireburst, the one we just picked up. That will allow us to shoot projectiles at enemies and take care of them from afar. And I need to look around. It's a good thing I did because I just remembered that this is a thing. Hmm. Soul Seeker. Press triangle to switch between spells. We have 20 of this one. Soul Seeker is a homing missile that you can fire at enemies. Which can come in handy. And there's our first enemy of the game, this little sandworm. Just get in close before it strikes at you and just keep... And you will gain an additional life. Just keep pressing circle to destroy them. What we just picked up was a soul fragment. Small ones are worth one, big ones are worth five, and I believe that if you collect a hundred of them, you can get an extra life. You will need these things. And I want to make sure that I get this, too. Ah! They are few in number, but vital to your quest. You will need to pick up Ancestor Souls in order to progress through the game. There are four in every level. There are 13 levels in all, which means there are 52 Ancestors to pick up in the game. And there's more Fire Bursts in case we need it. More Voodoo Balls. Excellent. And I want to make sure that I'm paying attention as I move around. Oh, by the way, you do want to strike the hint, hint things with the attack button. I forgot to attack the first one. I'll just go back and show it off. Hold down the jump button longer to jump higher. Well, obviously. How else are we going to get up here? And for the second one... Use the camera rotation button to adjust the camera position. So again, L1 and R1, move the camera left and right. Also be sure to look behind that thing for a pot containing two voodoo dolls. There's some more homing ammo. And okay, there's nothing else over here. I'm just going to go ahead and, hey, okay, you're already right there. Now, since we have a spell, we can actually aim with R2, the same button to look around with, and not only can we look around, but we can aim spells if we need to, which is very nice. You do want to take advantage of that. And there's a pot behind that flame, and I want to get this first. And there is yet another voodoo doll. Now, okay, let's break this. Let's break this too. Be aware. We just picked up a heart that refills health. We are now at full health, if you can see by the little green meter there on the right side of the screen. 
I should also mention that the ammunition account for your current spell is in the lower right corner, by the way. So, we're supposed to go over here to move on, I think. I believe you can kind of tell just by looking around a little bit. Like, there's a, there's a heart you can pick up right there. And if you tap the look around button, you can move the camera behind of Kuji. So you can center it if you need to. Just like that. And we might as well go ahead and go in here because we need to do that in order to continue on. Before we do that, though, we, before we can do much in here, though, we need to face this grim reaper-like spirit who has suddenly just shown up just out of nowhere. He just slowly approaches us. You can just stand in place and just hit him with the melee attack with the circle button. And from here, we want to break stuff. And, ooh, before I do that, I just remember that these are here. You want to pick these up, too. And there's some more easy-to-miss voodoo dolls right there. And you could just wait for these things to move across, but you can, like, jump on top of them and just get past them that way. And there's another soul there. There's another ancestor. Now, by striking this with the circle button, instead of actually striking it, we push the plate forward, which stops the wheel there from turning. With that, we can jump up here. I'm not going to grab the heart because I don't need it. Okuji. Okuji. Keisho? It was your brother, Aura. He murdered our wedding guest. He cast the spells that entrapped you. His minions ripped your heart out and condemned you to wander the underworld. Our families are preparing for war, and your brother is preparing to sacrifice me to the gods. You must escape and stop him. Your only hope is to journey to Navo, the land that connects the realms of the dead with our world. You must seek an audience with Baron Samedi. Only he can help you. To reach Navo, you must find a spirit gate. My powers are weakening, Ikuji. You must be swift. And we now finally have a face to put to the voice that we've been hearing all this time. The one that's been telling, of us, telling us about the power-ups and everything. That is Kesho, the woman that Akuji was slated to be married to before his untimely murder, so to speak. And I don't know why I grabbed that. I said I wouldn't, and now I did. And if you're wondering how I did that acrobatic jump, I just held L2 while running, and then I jumped. That's it. That's all. There are things that we can get here. More fire burst. And another voodoo doll. And oh boy. Um, that is a emu of death. Or rather a dodo bird. Oh, he saw us. You're better off using fire burst or any projectile weapon against that thing because that thing is fairly fast and it will hit you. And there was a heart in there as well, in case you needed one. I'm guessing they expect you to get hit by the dodo. Strike the blue diamond checkpoints to activate them. Let's do that. And I didn't get, like, the best shot of that happening, but I did strike the blue diamond. It flew away. It flew upwards. And once you get that to happen, that means you triggered a checkpoint. So in case we lose a life, we'll just return there instead of the beginning of the level. I wonder better. I should be using the Soul Seeker for that. But we found a small Soul Fragment right there. That gives us one Soul Fragment piece instead of five. And I've looked around here already. Making sure. And here's something. You must place the Noah on an altar to open the gate. That is a Lois Stone. We need to put that on that thing that the light is coming out of right there to open the gate that is blocking our path. I just moved away while Kesho was talking because I wanted to get away from this thing. Let's go ahead and use the regular projectile against this thing and strike the hit, hint thing. If I can, I'm not close enough. It's like a Sierra game, I'm not close enough. Press attack when you're a receptacle to place a carried lowest down. So just walk up the receptacle, press circle, 
Akuji will pick up the low, will produce the lowest stone, and then it'll just move on to the receptacle automatically. Also, we need to destroy this thing again. Also, there are more dragonflies. And not even though. Oh, there, there, there it is. Oh, there's two of them. Well, I knew there was two of them. I was just wondering where the second one went. Well, I don't really need to aim to get the second one. But I did want to be safe. Now, I want to look around real quick. Oh, speaking of looking around. I forgot to break the pot near the lowest stone. Third ancestor. I forgot to do that. Thankfully, I went back. While hanging, Akuji may not cast spells, but he can use his legs to attack. First of all, there is a post here, and while I'm tempted to break it, you don't want to do that because you can jump onto it and stand on it just by holding the jump button and getting Akuji there accordingly. From there, you can just jump over here. Why are we doing this? Because this is the only way you're going to be able to get these. That's the only way you're going to be able to get these three voodoo dolls. Because if you break the post, you can't get these unless you come back. You can come back to previous levels in case you need ancestors and whatnot. Or if you need to pick up voodoo dolls that you missed. Speaking of which, there was some soul seeker there. I'll definitely take that. And by jumping up to the grate that we were re recently just on top of, we can climb. We don't have to hold the A button. Just press it and jump into it, and Akuji will automatically grasp on. From there, you can move around with the control pad or the analog stick. And if you press circle, you can kick. Kicking is how you trigger this hit box here. Press jump button to release, to release from monkey bars. You want to make sure you go all the way up here because the edge where the waterfall is, it does have a bit of... A current to it and it will push you down and that's what it looks like when you get hit that green meter goes down and that red part of the meter means you got hit while casting well bleh. while climbing a Kuji may not cast spells or attacks so if you're if you're on one of the horizontal grates, like the one I was on earlier before I fought those dragonflies. You can cast spells, which you can't cast spells, but you can kick. On ladder like gra like things, you can't attack at all. Also, before I go up there, I want to line myself up a little bit. And I... Yeah, okay. Let's jump over. Okay, that's too far. There is a way to get over to those voodoo dolls. You just got to be careful about it. And that was not the best place to leap to. I believe you want to leap over. No, that's not it either. I did this in the practice run. Maybe I got to go even further to the left. Okay. Oh, cool. I just now realized. By looking around, you can recenter Kuji without moving him. And then you can do what you need to do. Hmm. There is a way to get over there. Maybe I should go to the right. And I thought I had enough camera problems with Gex and her... Or not enter the gecko. Well, that game too, but I the one I had in mind was deep cover gecko. And Gucci did not even jump. I was too close to the edge. I'm going to get these before this video is over, believe you me. I as I was saying, I thought I had enough camera problems with the 3D Gex games. But apparently I kind of had some right there, apparently. Maybe I should go this way. There we go. I had to go a little further to the left. And from here, 
I want to jump towards the voodoo balls just to be safe and then just inch my way towards them. There we go. That is how you play the guitar in the MTV. I have not used that phrase in a long time. And Dodo Bird. Oh, I was, I was already on Soul Seeker. Well, don't need to aim, but I'm going to do it just to be safe anyway. Get that soul fragment before, and do it in a safe manner before, you know, the Dodo is able to get me, which in that case it couldn't, but still. And we do want to look around. There is a heart. I will go ahead and pick that up. That will refill our health. A little bit of it, but still, it re it's, some's better than none. And by walking up the switch and pressing circle, we can trigger the switch and open this gate. But there's even more. There's this little vine that you can jump up and grab. Assuming you're directly under it. And it's kind of like the little ropes you can slide down in the 3D Gex games. Matter of fact, the engine for this game is based on Gex Enter the Gecko. They modified it a little bit to make it a little more realistic adventure. Like... For example, jumps are semi-committal. You can kind of change the direction you go when you jump, but not by much. It's a little less cartoony here. Also, I broke a post here that gave me the fourth and final ancestor for this stage. And... I don't know if I have everything. I'm pretty sure I'll find out if I do. But for now... I want to be careful as I approach this thing because. And don't you dare get near me. I thought I was going to have to swing my weapons, but thankfully I did not. These particular spirits in this room will move around quite a bit. And I switched to, from the Soul Seeker to my melee weapon just to be safe. Let's look around here. Nothing to find here. And I, just by walking into the stone, I was able to push it. You can see the little picture of the pushing man on it telling you, hey, push this thing. And there's a spirit gate. We need to go into there to go to the overworld, which Casho told us to go to. There we will have our audience with, with Baron Samedi. So let's go in. Also, be sure to check behind the spirit gates. Be sure to check the, behind the exit of each level. Because I'm pretty sure there's going to be a point in the game where the game just puts something there that's going to be really easy to miss. And then you're just going to check around the exit just for the heck of it. And you're going to find it and you're going to kick yourself. So we found four ancestors. We found all the ancestors for Cockatus. The first warden, which is the first boss of the game, will require seven. These will be explained in the following cutscene, I believe. to request your charity I do not suffer lightly your insults to the honor of my family nor I your insolence however I can see that you are well meaning although perhaps misguided the legacy that I refer to is one that has placed you in your current predicament your family Okuji is evil they have always been evil in death their spirits taint strike a deal with you. If you cleanse the underworld of your ancestors, I will allow you to return to Mamora and save your precious Keisho. Will you help to purge the underworld of the souls of your family? 
Even if I agree, how can one man empty the underworld of all of the souls of his ancestors? You need not find them all. Some are more corrupt than others. Explore all the lands of each vestibule of hell and bring me the most powerful souls. If you have collected enough souls, I will allow you to meet the warden of the vestibule. If you can defeat the warden, I will send you deeper into your quest. With only four vestibules, Akuji, surely you can do this. I have opened the door that leads to Futhan. After gathering the soul of your ancestors, you must destroy the lightning spires that guard the spirit gate. Then you can return here. Interesting. So, apparently, our family lineage is not as great as we thought it was. And instead, it was rather less than virtuous. Also, Baron Samedi totally reminds me of Live and Let Die. But anyway, we have now made it to the overworld of the game. I forgot he does things if you leave him moving around long enough. Or leave him standing around long enough, I should say. So now we have to find the souls of our ancestors and rid the underworld of them. We've already found four. We've already been through Cockatus. We need to go to Pluton next and destroy the lightning spires that guard the spirit gate. There is also the world of Coloss, which totally reminds me of Jinder Mahal. And there's Cockatiss, which, which we can go back to at any given time. Um, is there anything here? There is, I think. No, that's probably where the Warren is. Well, there's Coloss, there's Pluton. There's Cockatists. And that's pretty much all that we can look at for now. I can't really move the camera around or anything. Oh, wait. I can still look around anyway. Interesting. So we just have these other two places to go to for now. And... By going up to this save icon and just walking up to it we can save our game in one of four slots we've already gotten four ancestors and we spent 21 minutes playing the game now we're returning to Navo that's where the that's the overworld I do find it interesting that Navo is kind of based on the word navigate I believe Though the actual meaning might be slightly different. But anyway, we will be going to Pluton. Getting some more Ancestor Souls. And destroying the Lightning Spires that block the Spirit Gates. But that will have to wait until the next video. Join me next time where we go to Pluton. Until then, this is Prince Watercress. Take care, stay safe, and thanks for watching!